cannon is salvaged from an 18th century sunken ship. It is often a wonder to behold, but 200 years ago there was hardly a large town or city in Britain where a life expired or captured piece of artillery couldn't be found used in a new role such as a bollard, be it placed on a street corner to protect buildings from wayward carts or to block the entrance to a particular road or pathway. And obviously London was no exception, with literally hundreds of them placed around the capital streets. Over time, however, most have simply disappeared or been replaced by modern versions of which the design largely mimics the cannons of old. And despite modernity ever more encroaching upon the city, a few still remain. Now this is Fisherman's Hall Wharf on the northwest bank of London Bridge on the Thames. And as you can see, it boasts three guns spaced between three more modern counterparts. Now whether there was originally six here, I have no idea, but as you can see, they're mounted with the barrel up and the usual oversized cannonball filling the muzzle. Now I'm clearly no expert on uh, ordnance or artillery, but the Royal Navy of old has long been an interest of mine and at a quick glance I'd suggest that this could be maybe an 18 pounder cannon the 18 pound being a reference to the weight of cannonball a particular gun could fire and I know this could open the floodgates with statements suggesting well that's not an 18 pounder and it, it quite possibly isn't but please do because I would love to know more about them Next, I cross back over the river and join the absurdly busy throng of Borough Market. Unfortunately, due to the busy nature, I was able to film very little here, but I did finally track down my quarry. Of a slightly different design and very worn and smooth, and also used as a temporary stand to eat fish and chips, it looks of a similar size to those of Fisherman's Hall Wharf, an 18-pounder. Now an 18 pounder gun incidentally, these were usually the secondary armament on ships of the line such as HMS Victory used on the third deck or the main armament of the majority of Royal Navy frigates in the early 19th century. Of course there's no way to determine the correct history of these pieces so this is clearly pure conjecture. Staying on the south bank, I've moved westwards and I'm now on Bankside, close to the replica of Shakespeare's Globe and next to Southwark Bridge. Here we find the next cannon, a much smaller calibre this one, probably around an 8 pounder and used by many navies during the age of sail. This particular piece is displaying almost all of its barrel with just the cascable or button, that's the large ball at the end of the cannon, below the ground. I wonder how many people have walked past this gun oblivious to its former use. It's pretty well weathered but it has been there the best part of 200 years I'd imagine. And you can see down there the remains of the trunnions, they've been sawn off. The trunnion is the bits that stick out either side and hold it onto the truck. And you've got three bands there, not quite sure but it could be an indentation from a strengthener. And interestingly, there doesn't appear to be, or there isn't, an uh, oversized cannonball blocking the barrel. That's quite unusual. I quite like this cannon, and to be honest with you, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised it's still there. Now, there's also a story attached to this cannon, which suggests that after the resounding Royal Navy victory over the combined French and Spanish fleets at Cape Trafalgar in 1805, a number of the ships taken were brought back to Britain and stripped out. The story goes that as French cannons were of a different calibre to British ones, the guns were of no use, and so were distributed around the streets to use as bollards. Alas, this tale is almost certainly just a myth, as no captured enemy ships were brought back to the UK after the battle. 
with most either landed at bases abroad or destroyed in the terrible storm which blew up after the battle. The final gun I'm going to look at can be found next to St Helen's Church in Bishopsgate and a short distance from the Gherkin building. And this is my favourite for a number of reasons. For starters, it's buried muzzle down, which almost uniquely displays the gun's cascabel, and despite its rusted and pitted appearance, it shows much detail, including the filled in touch hole. This is where the gunner would ignite the powder to fire the gun. And in contrast to the myth of the bankside gun, this one has what could in all probability be a genuine French origin. On June 1st, 1794, a naval battle took place a few hundred miles west of the island of Ushant, a French island approximately at the point where the English Channel meets the Atlantic Ocean. Known as the Fourth Battle of Ushant, or more commonly, the Glorious First of June, it heralded a great British victory over the French. It's a known fact that many of the guns from captured French prizes were taken to the Tower of London, and historians believe that it's highly likely that this is one of them. It also matches a design again of French origin, a heavy 36 pounder, the first of which was cast in 1786. If this is one of those, it makes this gun 236 years old. Obviously there were once many cannons dotted around London and indeed the rest of the UK with other examples still remaining upon the streets of Blackwall, Poplar, Wapping and Hampstead to name a few. But they are disappearing and with the increasingly advancing expansion of London, their days on the streets may be limited. <laughs>